there is a brand new decentralized and anonymous marketplace that has been released uh, on Bitcoin Talk and GitHub. Um, I just saw this a moment ago, and at first I thought it was going to be the Open Bazaar, which has been in development for a while. But this is actually something completely different. It's um, here's here's some of the details. I'll list them right now. It's decentralized with no central servers. Um, it, it uses bit message as a transportation medium, um, which is uh, secure and encrypted. Uh, the NSA won't be able to read that those messages. There is a public channel for offers and then messages for direct communication. It uses Bitcoin for payments, of course. They use uh, three different multi-sig multi-signature addresses: one for payment and two for insurance payments. So um, that that that'll make um, transactions very secure between uh, buyers and vendors. And then uh, buyers and sellers both send five percent of the sum to one multi-signature address, and both have an incentive to be honest and stick to their side of the deal. And after the buyer receives the goods, all three payments from the addresses are released. 5% back to the buyer, and payment goes to the seller, and then 5% also go, goes back to the seller. So it kind of like puts a little bit of collateral uh, from each person into the pool so that nobody um, wants to kind of, you know, rip off the other person. So uh, I, I haven't read that much into this. This this just came out, but I think it's fascinating. This is great. We've got we've got multiple decentralized anonymous marketplaces in the works, not just Open Bazaar. That's great news. Yeah, creating creating you know 100% decentralized marketplaces, I would consider that to be the next step in peer-to-peer -peer technology, uh, and that would you know make it even harder for authorities to enforce, you know, the war on drugs or whatever war they're waging on consumers' goods at yes, the moment. Yes. Because, you know, Tor Tor is great and everything, you know, Darknet is great and everything. Um it's it's a decentralized peer to peer network. But, you know, the enterprises uh operating on uh operating on the Tor network, you know, they're completely centralized. Um Yes. And that's what you happened know, to Silk Road. That's yeah, why they were you know, able to they, seize they those. Have, they use they have servers and things like that, and they have you know administrators and proprietors, and um, you know that's how people get caught, and that's how you know the government will eventually defeat Bitcoin if they ever do, because they're never going to be able to defeat Bitcoin as a currency, but they can make it impossible to use by you know uh, by you know, tightening the restrictions on what kinds of money can be accepted and in, uh, in marketplaces. So if you if you have something like this, like Open Bazaar, and this you know one that was just uh, released on GitHub, you know governments can't even do that. You know they can't even regulate the point of sale anymore, and that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean we, this is the, yeah you're right. I think this is the next evolution of you know, this peer-to-peer -peer technology and how it can revolutionize the economy. Like, first we got Bitcoin, decentralized payment system, but then we got all these marketplaces that use Bitcoin, but they all have central points of failure. They have actual human beings operating them and running important things relating to the marketplaces. And if you take those people out of the equation, if they do something bad, if they get arrested, if if they run run away with everyone's money, like this is <laughs> human beings are are incredibly incredibly flawed, and that's why a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure is almost always infinitely better than having a you know a hierarchy of humans who. Um, who can be taken out of the equation and the whole marketplace fails. So this is fa this is fantastic news. I love it. It's called um, it's called BitX Bay. That's what it's called. And um, and you know hopefully it gains some traction. You will with pretty soon we'll have competing decentralized marketplaces, and we'll find out which one uh, successfully revolutionizes the marketplace formula and makes it immune to attacks by the government and also immune to um, bad actors within the marketplace itself. Yeah, I hope we see things like decentralized exchanges and decentralized banks too in the near future. 
Yeah, that would be really great. Because, you know, then we couldn't have another Mount Gox, even if somebody tried, you know, deliberately to steal people's money like that. And um, a problem a lot of people in the Bitcoin community have been running into is that banks actually, you know, shut down your account if you're using Bitcoin. Like, if you have money coming in from a Bitcoin exchange, they'll shut your account down because, you know, they'll claim, you know, money laundering risks or something like that. Right, right. And it's really because they just don't like Bitcoin. They don't you know, trust it. They don't understand yeah. it. And so once if if we could if we start seeing things like decentralized exchanges and decentralized banks, you know, then that would be a sign of, you know, a really strong financial infrastructure being built around the Bitcoin monetary system itself. And that that can do nothing but good because it will only make Bitcoin more secure and safer to use. Yeah, and it'll also do tons of great, great progress towards um, promoting freedom for people, um, promoting free market ideals, allowing people to transact um, in any way they please, sell anything they want, buy anything they want, without asking permission from anyone. Literally, you pretty soon, you won't even need permission from the marketplace itself to sell something or buy something on there. It'll be like, it'll be kind of like an autonomous um, network that doesn't rely on any particular human being to, to give permission to anyone to use it. It'll just exist by itself for the public to use freely. Yeah, and that would make, you know, that would make exchange completely voluntary like 100 percent you know like um because as long as there's a demand there'll be somebody who can fill it without having to worry about being shut down by somebody who has different morals or you know like you know competing in a separate industry or something like that um and you know that would be really great for the economy in, in general because that would just produce you know a bunch of growth yeah, and a lot of job opportunities. You know, if we had a like a purely decentralized economy, you know, people could make a living, you know, with their laptops at home. Yep, and they would they wouldn't have to rely on, uh, you know, giant corporations and things like that. Yeah, no, or having I don't to have... get in their gas guzzling car and drive to some big building where they sit at a desk and do paperwork all day. You can do plenty of fantastic work directly th through the internet. Yeah, no, of course, I don't I don't have problem with centralized corporations and, and private enterprises like that. As long as they're profitable, you know, then they're good and we should have them. But I think I think that this type of decentralization will end up being more profitable than, you know, the the hierarchy, the hierarchical structure of yeah. corporations.